thank you, Internet Society, for having me here. It's really a great honor. And I want to, to take the chance to uh, thank many people who are not here and uh, some people who are here. First, my sister Laura, who came all the way from Barcelona, where she lives. Uh, my brother in arms, Demi Gechko, you know him, he is around and he came from Sao Paulo. Uh, my best friend and colleague, Claudine Oliveira, who is certainly watching uh, the ceremony from Rio de Janeiro. And through Claudine and Demi, I wish to acknowledge the participation of hundreds of people. Uh, my idea is that, is that it was more than 300 people for sure, uh, whom I could recall individually and with whom I worked for 10 to 12 years deploying the Brazilian internet. On the other hand, uh, I want to uh, thank in the person of Glenn Reichert, uh, a whole region of people abroad uh, here in the US, Europe, and Japan who helped the Brazilian Internet Initiative take off. And uh, uh, those people helped us in many, so many anonymous and generous ways. To name a few, let me cite Steve Goldstein, who's not here, Larry Landweber, who's here, uh, Sao Han, who was mentioned by Pietro Semoli, Andrew McLaughlin, Daniel Karenberg, etc. Now, let me take the chance to make a few comments uh, regarding uh, the situation in Brazil when uh, we started to deploy the internet and compare it with the situation today, 30 years later. 30 years ago, uh, when we started to think about uh, uh, actively uh, connecting the country to the then academic internet, which was uh, taking off in the world, uh, the situation in, in Brazil was uh, pretty much as uh, you see today on the news. Uh, inflation rates pretty high, a totally discredited political party in power, a, signific a significant parcel of the population uh, struggling to barely maintain animals operandi to the next day and so on. Even in that situation, we were able to get started and we were able to uh, get the support of uh, all those people I mentioned and I didn't mention, so that the Brazilian I initiative uh, for the internet took off with energy. And throughout the early 90s, uh, the results started to show that the bet on the future was really the correct thing to, to do. Now, uh, looking at Brazil again 30 years later, we see the very same situation. And the question is, uh, what to do? The whole country uh, has been waiting to see when and how recovery will begin, uh, political, uh, economic, and so on. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you see several uh, initiatives re related to ICTs and to internet in Brazil having been advanced by the government and by the private sector uh, because life goes on and you cannot just sit there waiting for something to happen. And I would say that uh, even the Brazilian government and particularly the Secretariat for ICT's policies in Brazil, they have been carrying uh, their duties with competence under very uh, difficult circumstances. So what to do? We have been watching this uh, initiative with uh, great sympathy because in times of crisis, even those run-of-the-mill activities are important in order to prepare the country to restart functioning properly in better times, which we expect uh, are going to come from uh, next year on. On the other hand, uh, since at least two years ago, my group has been uh, participating in several discussions regarding what to do uh, to help take ICTs and the internet in Brazil to a really strategic next level as a supergovernmental initiative, not to depend too much on governments, uh, in order to structure the basis for a strong, sustainable cycle of economic and social development, aiming at the uh, year 2030 as the year where we're going to cross the watermark again, so to say. So the short stay uh, at this ISOC event has, uh, has been very important for me because it has allowed me to get updated on current issues and ideas. 
It has allowed me to renew uh, old and always precious contacts. Uh, there are many people here uh, which or who I have not seen for the last 20 years or so, uh, so that I can really get re-energized and anxious to get back to Brazil. And a final comment is that I was watch watching uh, the talks and ideas of those under 25s here, and uh, it gets clear in my mind and, my, and in the mind of everybody, I think, uh, as if it could be forgotten, which is impossible, why and uh, how we have to face our troubled times with uh, renewed confidence. It is that in any country, there are countless under 25s at this right moment looking for ways to contribute to the future of uh, the country through ICT initiatives. So in each country and in each troubled time, uh, it is time to rearticulate the future, to pass the baton on, and to rest assured that an eager and enthusiastic generation will take on. And that's basically what we are doing. Thank you again for the opportunity to be here. I'm really humbled and honored. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.